with no way up and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free.
Uh, with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. This is a book that was near and dear to the heart of the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Has an interesting background, y'all. We'll ask those who can, we can be resting on our feet if you can. You can stand. If you walked in here, you can stand. If you didn't walk in here, stand anyway. We'll let you stand slow. I want to take you on a journey with the Apostle Paul this morning. This book was written out of Paul's relationship and heart to the Corinthian church. You're in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And what's anointed or the anointed relationship in this book is that Paul went to, to Corinth and stayed there a year and a half, 18 months. And while there, he endeared himself to the church. He started the church and it was doing well. Paul left. When he left the church, about a year and a half later, he wrote a letter to them to find out how they were doing. That letter is lost. We don't have that letter. There were three letters written to the Corinthians. We only have two. We know this because if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, they will show you where he makes mention of the lost letter. But how we got 1 Corinthians is, even though we don't have the letter, the Corinthians received it, they wrote back to Paul. And now what you see is 1 Corinthians is Paul's answer to them. Here's what he did. You remember what 1 Corinthians. He had to answer the divisions, the, the issues in the church. One of the divisions was some people were saying, and this is not Christians, I'm of Cyphus, I'm of Paul, I'm of Paulus, I'm of Jesus. They were choosing sides on who they wanted to be with and not choosing Jesus. And after they did that, he found out there was also immorality. Family members sleep on one another. Then he found out that they defiled the Lord's Supper. They were going to the Lord's Supper to argue and to use it in a way that was blasphemous to God. Not only that, they didn't understand spiritual gifts. Everybody wanted tongues. But they didn't understand the greater gift of hospitality. And after doing that, Paul said, since you're so divided, he preached against those issues. Later, he sent Timothy, because he was in Ephesus working, and he could not get back to Corinth, but he sent Timothy there, and Timothy said, Paul, they just forgot everything you taught them. They forgot everything you said. They're listening to false teachers, wherein the tone of this letter is Paul defending his credentials, defending his apostleship, defending Jesus Christ. Go with me. I'm going to read from the NIV. And I want you to know that because now you'll understand the reading. He was talking to them about those false teachers. Verse 1 of chapter 11. I hope you will put up with me for a little foolishness. Yes? Please, put up with me. I'm jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband, to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may have been somehow led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you receive, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it so easily. I do not think I am in the least inferior to those super apostles. I may indeed be untrained as a speaker, but I do have knowledge. We have made this perfectly clear to you in every way. Was it for sin? For me to lower myself in order to elevate you by my preaching the gospel of God to you free of charge. I robbed other churches by receiving support from them so I could serve you. And when I was with you and needed something, I was not a burden to anyone. For the brothers who came to me from Macedonia supplied what I needed. I have kept myself from being a burden to you in any way and will continue to do so. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, nobody in the regions of Achaia will stop this boasting of mine. Why? Because I do not love you. God knows I love you. I do. And I will keep doing what I'm doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want to 
want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. Go be verse 21. To my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. Whatever anyone else dared to boast about, I'm speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to be talking this way. I'm more. I work harder. Been in prison more frequently. Been flogged more severely. Been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers. In danger from bandits. In danger from fellow Jews. In danger from the Gentiles. In danger in the city. In danger in the country. In danger at sea. And in danger from false believers. I have labeled and toiled. And I have gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst. I have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure and concern of all the churches. Bow your head right now, please. God, you know, I ask that you would come, Lord, and anoint fresh my mind. That your word would be the only word heard here today. That you would bring us to a place, Lord, of understanding what you're trying to to teach us and what you want us to do. So God, right now, we bless you and give you glory and honor. I ask that you would touch my mind, my heart, and my head. And everything that is said today would bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For as long as the Spirit of God will allow, I'm going to speak from the thought Thank you, musicians, ushers. I'm going to speak from the thought. Don't let up or you will break down. Don't let up or you will break down. One more time. Don't let up or you will break down. I was having one of those days where I was actually fighting something that I had already defeated, but I had to fight it again. If anybody's ever been there, it's one of those things I struggle with no, ain't none of your business. But I struggle with it. I know you got your own struggles, you struggle with it. But it was something I struggled with and I defeated it time again. So while I was there that day, I became a little perturbed with God. Because in this struggle, I gotta do everything to build myself up. I gotta get ready for the fight. I gotta get my faith up so I can fight this off until I get the victory. And I get the victory sometimes two days, sometimes it may be a month, sometimes it may be a week, but I do eventually get the victory. But what I was upset with God about is the fact that not only was I dealing with that regular stuff, I was also dealing with something else that day. So I asked God a question that we don't like to ask them, but I know it was all right to ask God because I was angry at God. No good Christian wants to admit they were angry, but we get angry. Since I know he was God, I calm down my anger before I talk to him. But I said to God, God, why do I got to keep going through this? Why do I have to keep facing the same stuff over and over again? I did not get the answer that I wanted. But I did not know that God was about to break me off a piece of revelation from the throne room of God. Because while I was sitting there, he gave me an answer that was so powerful, so revelatory, that my spirit started jumping on the inside of me. I even forgot what I was angry about. Because when the spirit of God shows up, the joy of God shows up, you don't even remember what else is happening. And when that spirit showed up, my mind went to a place of worship. And I'm going to share with you what God said to me, because you need to feel the same thing that God, I felt when God said this to me. He didn't answer my question, but he said this. He said, no matter how much you have to go through, no matter what you go through, no matter how many times you suffer, 
No matter how long you suffer, no matter what you got to do to survive, you will win because I built you to last. Oh, that's somebody hear what I'm saying. God knew I was frustrated going through the same thing. So God said unto me, it doesn't make a difference what you're going through. From the foundation of the world, before you were in your mother's womb, before there was a world, I knew what you had to face. So what I did was put enough power in you so you could face what you had to face. So no demon in hell, no power, no struggle, no nothing you go through is going to stop you from being
It's not great. I love this. He said, so you be, so your faith won't fail. And when you get converted, help your brother. What does that mean? Here's what God said. I pray for you. So when I let you go through something, it's going to build your strength. You'll be converted to the fact that now you can handle that. I know some people sitting here all cool and calm, like they know they handle some stuff. But the only reason you handle it is because God lets you go through something. And when God lets you go through something, he got you to the place where now you can handle some things and keep praising and keep praying. Where the folk that know no matter how dark it gets, I still got to praise for God. No. 
you let it out again. Uh, that saying, let's get off the gas, means that I'm giving less effort and I'm less determined. I don't give God what I used to give him. I've been serving him a long time. I don't have to do what I used to do. And God is saying, no, when you let it up, you went into a breakdown. Oh, I feel it right now. Some of you got five people that pray. And I feel that this may not be a shouting message, but I'm going to have to do some preaching and teaching so you understand something. Some of you in here, the problem in your life, so many Christians have failed, not because God doesn't want to do it, but because you let up. God was still urging you to come. You let up. I ain't got another night. I'm tired. It's got all work with you. But, but let something happen in your life. You want to kick in the overdrive then. Mm. Want to come in, oh, Lord. Only reason you don't know when God left 
the church now. Shit, look at that. Wow. So he left and you thought, I'm just down because the enemy's on me. No, God left because you gave up. You let up. So the last one, I really don't want to say this one, but many of you are being run by fear instead of by the power of God. What do I mean by fear? I mean the fact that you let fear run you. Come to church shout. Hallelujah. It's not tears jumping. Go home and the devil run you out your own bedroom. Run you out your own house. Can't go to work. I got too much anxiety. I'm too anxious. And the problem with that is the power you had is gone because you let up. How do I know? Go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 4. One of the worst Bible uh, scriptures in the Bible, except for what I just read to you a moment ago. And that is Elisha. He just knocked down the prophet's bell. He got smart with him. He was telling him everything. Because when we feel good, we, we jump up now. We love the Lord. We love the Lord. But then what happened to Elisha is he allowed the words of Jezebel to get in his heart and it stole his anointing and put fear in his heart. Yeah. When did the devil put your shout and so? When did the devil get you to the point that you're a Christian that's accepting walking around being all anxious? and never have any power. Are y'all stay here? I know this is not a, a shouting message, but I, God told me to teach this thing today, so I gotta let you know what I'm talking about. Because the reality is, you were built to last. You should win. But when you go into a breakdown, it's a dangerous place to be. It's never about whether God will quit on us. It's whether or not we quit on God. Three points. Paul is our example today. You go to that 12th verse of the 11th chapter, and you'll find out it's in that 12th verse that Paul himself said, Paul said, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. I know everybody's after me. I know life and what you used to I know everybody's talking about me, but I don't care who's talking about me. I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. I don't care who's sitting next to me. I don't go to church to uh, actually please people. I go to church to celebrate the God Oh, 
distinctive between those who get blessed and those who won't, who don't. Here's what they do differently than those who get blessed. Though the distinctive is those who get blessed don't let other people determine their worship. Those who get blessed already know they believe God can do what he says. Oh, you, you can't wait till the child comes and start trying to believe God. And 
out the room. She was weak, she was stumbling, she was about to pass out. We were sitting there, you know, like I said, we were young, first married, not saved. We just going to try to get through, you know, patting her head and stuff, giving her, tiling up. Martha said, I got to the hospital. We ran to the hospital. She was so bad off that we got to the emergency room, they put her in a closet to examine her. The man said, take her right into surgery. When they got into surgery, they opened her up and found out he had sewn up some afterbirth in her. What was happening, all my nurses in here, she was getting sepsis from the infection, then her body was getting septic, which means that the body then, would, organs would start shutting down, the blood pressure would bottom out, and she would die. After she was coming through the surgery, the man ran into me and said, you know what, if you had not gotten her up in here, she would have died. And I know I wasn't saved then, but what I would have told him if I was, I didn't bring her up in here. It was a miracle from God that we had enough sense to
And God said, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to divide the kingdom. Ten tribes leaving, you're going to get two tribes. But your family will never sit on the throne of a united kingdom again. And I'm only giving you the two because of my child, David. Amen. And then the last one. I'm out of here. I say you can kill your own self. They're good listening to people. Yeah. King Saul. God gave him directions. Kill everybody. The people said, save the best stuff. Save the best stuff. He listened to the people. Lost his kingdom. His son died, and he fell on his own sword. I'm going to pick this up next week. The next thing God said, no, listen to them. Don't act like them. I just ran out of time right now. Some of you in here at work, you're sending your life to a breakdown. And all I need to tell you is, Jesus does not deserve Christians, believers, family members who don't put him first. I need you to know that Jesus died to pay a debt he didn't know because we couldn't pay a debt he did know. So he said, I'll pay it for you. But well, somebody better know Jesus is the one that made the way for you to be sitting here now. Everybody stand to your feet. Don't let up. Don't take your gas off the pedal. What he did.